Starting next Saturday, a season of films starring Burt Reynolds. In Lucky Lady, he's in the drink with Liza Minnelli and Gene Hackman. Put the gas drum on the deck. What? The gas drum on the deck! There's more sober action afloat in the celebrated high-tension drama, Deliverance. In Hustle, he's a rugged, overworked cop. I've been very patient with you. You listen. Don't interrupt me. Your daughter was not a homicide victim. Nobody cares. Don't tell me nobody cares. Sometimes we don't have time to care. Hit me again. <coughs> and there's hard-hitting comedy with Sam Whiskey. Uh, uh, it don't make sense. Letting a man get away with a thing like that. Sam Whiskey dusts himself down and gets back on the wagon next Saturday at 7 o'clock on BBC One and opens a season of films starring Burt Reynolds. Back to this Saturday night, and in 35 minutes, the first of an eight-part rags-to-riches story of Margaret Kelly, the Dublin-born orphan who joined the Folie Bergère and, with her natural aptitude for dancing, went on to form her own company of dancers, the famous Bluebell Girls. First on BBC One, with its natural aptitude for bringing a smile to your face, Les Dennis's Laughter Show. This is quite delightful. Staffordshire. Around 1886, I should imagine, and uh, the work of Thomas Hetherington. One can tell that by the uh, distinctive shape. Now, these were always made in pairs, and if you did have its twin brother, then the value would be increased by some three or four times. Oh, but I have. Oh. Look. Oh. Ah, yes, delightful, but sadly the value isn't quite as great because, as you can see, the handle has been broken at some time and so they're not in precisely the same condition. Oh. They are not. <laughs> so, uh, where are you going for your holidays this year then, George? Oh, I thought I'd take wife shark fishing. Oh, shark fishing, that'll be nice. Yeah, mind you, she don't know she's going shark fishing. Oh, so it'll be a bit of a surprise for her then. Ah, she thinks she's going water skiing. <laughs> Like the honeybee sting, you've thrown and left my heart in pain. All you left, all you left, was our favorite song, the one we danced to all night long. It's the same old song, but with a different meaning since you've been gone. It's the same, the same old song, but with a different meaning since you've been gone. Oh, stop in the name of love. Pie, honey bunch. You know that I love you. I can't help myself. I love you and nobody else. Thank you. Thank you and good evening. I was watching the
the telly the other night, and, you know, nowadays, with so many award shows on, it made me think, imagine if they gave the right awards to the wrong people. <laughs> and the first award, Husband of the Year, goes to Dirty Den. What's the matter with you lot then, eh? <laughs> what are you staring at? Haven't you got arms to go to? Come on, I've got a date tonight, all right? <laughs> yeah, well, I've always liked women. I remember on my wedding day, I was stood there next to Ange, and the vicar said, uh, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I said, yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> the vicar said, I'll ask you again. <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, Angie's father came up to me and said, well, uh, are you going to be a man and do it tonight, or a mouse and do it tomorrow night? I said I was a rat. I did it last night. <laughs> Kind gentlemen, please. Thank you very much. And our next award, Woman of the Year, goes to Scylla Black. Oh! <laughs> surprise, surprise! <laughs> Red and yellow and pink and green, orange and purple and blue. I've been very ill lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was singing in the cavern, and a bloke from the back of the club threw a pint glass, and he hit this bloke who was sat at the front row on the side of the head. He turned round and said, Can you throw another one at me? I can still hear her. <laughs> oh, smashing, great, super. <laughs> what a lovely dart, hey, smashing. <laughs> super, great, smashing, great. Which camera are we on? This one, oh, we're over here, great, smashing. <laughs> hey, and what a lovely award, Jim Bowen, Sportsman of the Year, smashing, great. Now then, you've, you've had two darts. And you've scored six. You've got one dart left, and you need 147. <laughs> you can do it. What with, Jim? Use this hedgehog. <laughs> and that's the caravan you would have won if you hadn't been a wally with those two darts. <laughs> and speaker of the year is from open all hours, Mr. Arkwright. Ah, uh, what a surprise. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a bit put out. Well, they've given me an award, but what about Nurse Gladys? I'd like to give her, her, her <laughs> an award. Uh, last week, our little boy was sat on the pavement outside the shur, shur, shur shop, <laughs> and he was crying his eyes out. I said, hey, son, why are you crying? He said, because I can't do what the big, big boys do. So I sat down and cried with him. <laughs> and this year's Best Dressed Man Award goes to... Bob Geldof. Right, I'd like to thank you for this award. <laughs> I need your awards. For God's sake, will you keep on sending your awards in? Right, so dig deep into your pockets and send me your awards. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice to be best dressed man. You know, I went into Burton's the other day and I said to the bloke, I said, show me the cheapest suit in the shop. He said, you're wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> but this award is not only for me, it's for all my fans as well. A girl fan came up to me the other day and she said, if I covered myself in vanilla ice cream, chocolate sauce, and chopped hazelnuts, would you lick it off? I said, no. She said, tell me why. I don't like Sundays. <laughs> tell me why I don't like Sundays. Tell me why. Hello, and welcome to Children's BBC. Good, really good. And uh, got some really terrific, really good letters here today. <laughs> <laughs> Some really nice letters here. This one's from a lady, isn't that nice? It says, Dear Philip, you are the best thing that's ever happened to me. Isn't that nice? <laughs> the head of children's ITV. <laughs> yeah. Right, here's another letter that says, Dear Philip, I would like to see you in the bar. Naughty, naughty. <laughs> anyway, I'm allergic to sulfuric acid. <laughs> here that says, Dear Philip, half our class think you're really sexy and wants to marry you. Isn't that nice? <laughs> However, the girls all think you're soppy and would rather marry the gopher. <laughs> I don't think that's funny, Norman. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Let's have a look what we've got coming up for you tonight. We've got uh, Play School, in which a couple of out-of-work actors will be patronising you and treating you like the little morons that you really are. <laughs> And then there's still goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> and that's followed by muscle bound, really macho He Man and the Masters of the Universe. Oh, he sounds nice. <laughs> and then there's David Steele and David Owen with one man and his dog. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't be smoking. What about get down? 
that's followed by Bellamy's Bugle. And this week, David goes to Frogmore to have a look at some nice little froggies. <laughs> then he'll be going to Newton Abbott to have a look at some nice little newties. <laughs> and then he'll be going to Ghoul to have a look at some... <laughs> I think I can say that, Norman. You would, wouldn't you? Get down. <laughs> Just time to tell you about our competition this week. We want you to write in and tell us why Rolf Harris is famous. <laughs> well, the people don't actually know, so if you've got any suggestions, please write in and give us those suggestions on a postcard. That would be really good. Thanks very much. That's goodbye from us. That's all we've got time for. Right? Ow! <laughs> He's a, an Englishman, a Scotsman and an Irishman. And they got caught by the Oolamagooly tribe. <laughs> now, the Oolamagooly tribe, not many people know this, are famous for killing people and making canoes out their skin. So the chief went along the line, and he went to the Scotsman, he said, You fine skin, make good canoe. <laughs> you want a last request? He said, yes. He said, give me a large scotch. If I'm going to be killed, I want to have a few before I go. So I went, right, give him a scotch, killed him, skinned him, made a canoe. Went the Englishman, he said, good skin, make fine canoe. You want a last request? He said, yes, I'd like um, tea and crumpets, please. So they gave him tea and crumpets and killed him, skinned him, made a canoe out of him. Went the Irishman and said, uh, good skin, make fine canoe. You want last request? He said, yes, I'd like a fork, please. He said, a fork? What do you want there? He went, well, you're not making a canoe out of me. <laughs> good evening to you, one and all, and welcome to my show. My special guest this evening is a chap that you all know. I'm going to talk to him tonight and prattle on and on. My guest it is, nay, is it not, dear Michael Parkinson? Well, thank you and good evening. Right now, without delay, I'd like to introduce a man who has so much to say. When people talk of chat your horse, they tend to think of Parky. But here's a man of whom it's said, and rightly, Russell Hattie. Hattie and Parky, talking is our game. Questions and answers, all the ruddy say. Hearty and parky, discussing this and that. Twitfin and Whitfin, what a load of chat. <laughs> I think I read it somewhere, Mike, or maybe I did not, that you will talk to showbiz folk that you don't like a lot. Well, Russell, that's quite true. In fact, I only care for three. Gene Kelly, Jeffrey Boycott and that Billy Connolly. <laughs> Some people think that chat shows are an easy thing to do, but then they've never had to work with Roddle and Emu. <laughs> well, Michael, here I must concur, for nay, you're not alone. I've still a ringing in my ears from when I met Grace Jones. <laughs> Party and parking, talking is our game. game. Questions and answers, all the ruddy say. <laughs> Party and parking, discussing this and that. Witchman and Witchman, what a load of chance! Hey! Mrs. Cricket, come in. Here's the plan. I break out on Saturday. What I do is I fire through the window bars, I slide down a rope into the yard, and then I blow a big hole in the wall, and I'm out. Come here. Did you get the file? Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> You stupid woman, that's a cake. The fire's inside the cake. You clever woman, come here. Did you get the rope? Yeah. Good, good. You stupid woman, that's a coat. The rope's inside the coat. You clever woman, come here. Did you get the jelly? Yeah. Good, good. You stupid woman, I knew you'd get one thing wrong. I'm angelic night. Come here, come here. What? The jelly was in the jelly. <laughs> Hello, 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 hello. Anybody in from Scotland? You can get lost. We're not making porridge for two. <laughs> I love Scottish people. They get up in the morning, look under the bed, see if they've lost any sleep. <laughs> Won't give a door a bang. Did you hear about the Scottish couple staying in a hotel bed and breakfast? And she died in the night, and he rang down and cancelled the breakfast. <laughs> My next door neighbour's Scottish, he keeps accusing me of picking the lock on his dustbin. <laughs> he gets his cigarettes out of his pocket already lit. <laughs> it's that tight he only breathes in. <laughs> Did you read in the paper today that Esther Ranson's just been kidnapped? 
They thought at first it were terrorists, but now they've found out it's ivory poachers. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a walk around London today. Busy? All these women were pushing and shoving and pressing their bodies up against me. Blimey. I'm off again tomorrow, I really enjoyed <laughs> I went in a cafe. I was starving hungry, but the waiter told she was miserable. I sat down, I cut my pork pie up, there was a big fat worm in it. I called the waitress over, I said, over. I said, I said, there's a worm in this pork pie. She said, it's fat. I said, it should be, it's eating all the meat. <laughs> I said, and this egg smells. She said, well, I've only laid the table. <coughs> I said, I don't like mint sauce. She said, that's, that's your cabbage, love. <coughs> I said, and this crab stinks. She said, it shouldn't do. It's just walked up from the beach this morning. <laughs> I said, well, check its feet. It's trodding something. <coughs> Fellow went to the doctor. He said, doctor, doctor. Oh, I swallowed a mouth organ. The doctor said, that's funny. We had a woman in this morning. She's just done the same thing. He went, oh, that must have been harmonica. <laughs> He went to the doctor's and he got a frog growing out of his head. A frog growing out of his head. The doctor said, how long's it been like that? And the frog said, it started as a boil on me bum. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the doctor's other week. I said to the doctor, I said, do you know there's a nun in your waiting room and she's crying her eyes out? He said, I know, I've just told her she's pregnant. <laughs> Ooh, I said, she's not, is she? He said, no, but it's cured her hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, this fella is driving round in the country, a beautiful sunny day, driving his car like that, and all of a sudden a big cockerel ran right out in front of his car and he ran over it and killed it. <gasps> Cockadoodle dead. <laughs> he went and knocked on this farmer's door. He said, excuse me, he said, I've just killed your cockerel. He said, I'd like to replace it. The farmer said, well, please yourselves, the chicken's around the back. <laughs> little girl, she came home from school, little girl came home from school, she said, Dad, all the boys at school have bet me 50 pence I couldn't stand on my head. He said, they only want to look at your knickers. She said, well, I thought of that, so I took them off. Or <laughs> 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 oh, the two Irish fellas in bed, and one said to the other, I don't reckon much of this wire swapping. I went to bed with an Irish woman once. She said, you don't have to worry about making me pregnant. My husband's had a vasectomy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been super. Always remember, live every day as if it's your last. And one day you won't wake up and you'll be right. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about that time I went to Blackpool with Victor? No. Oh, the wind was so strong. It was blowing Victor's hair all over the place. Well, what's wrong with that, Mavis? He was too embarrassed to pick it up. son to bed he's putting his little boy to bed and just as he's closing the door he's in get out of bed and he starts praying little boy said god bless mommy god bless daddy god bless granddad goodbye grandma oh dear so i went to bed the next morning got a phone call grandma's dead she says oh blimey so the next night he's putting him to bed he's listening at the door little boy said god bless mommy god bless daddy goodbye granddad next morning's a phone call the granddad's dead oh dear he puts him to bed the next night Listens at the door. Little boy said, God bless mummy. Goodbye, daddy. <laughs> oh no. So he's tossed and turned all night and finally he's dropped off asleep. Eight o'clock in the morning, the alarm clock's gone off. He wakes up, he went, Oh, I'm still alive. Thank God for that. And he opened the curtains, he said, Oh, it's a beautiful day. And he rushed down the stairs and he flung open the door. And the milkman was dead on the doorstep. <laughs> I was born from original sin And 
flying. I'm not frightened of flying, I'm frightened of crashing. <laughs> I mean, it puts you off straight away, doesn't it, when you get to the airport and you see written in six-foot letters, terminal. <laughs> Remember the last time I flew, I knew we were in trouble when the pilot got on with a guide dog and a white stick. <laughs> I said to the stewardess, I said, he's blind. He said, yeah, but he's all right apart from that. I said, but how does he know when to take off? She said, well, he just speeds down the runway and when he gets to the end, everybody goes, Jesus. <laughs> He came over the intercom, he said, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking, I'm a bit drunk, but I'll be all right once I've had a sleep. <laughs> and if, if you look out of the left-hand window, you'll get a very good view of the Eiffel Tower. Don't all look at once. <laughs> there was a man sat in front of me, he said, it's really stuffy in here, isn't it? I'll just open a couple of windows. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he didn't even say cheerio. <laughs> The stewardess came round with the drinks. There was a priest and a vicar sat together. She said to the priest, uh, would you like a drink, Father? He said, yes, young lady, I'll have a double whiskey. She said, would you like anything, vicar? He said, certainly not. I would rather commit adultery than let alcohol pass my lips. The priest said, cancel my order. I didn't know we had a choice. <laughs> she said to me, she said, we're going to have a bit of turbulence. I said, I'd rather have an extra sausage. <laughs> The food was good, at least, you know. I sat there with this lovely big bowl of minestrone soup. I was just about to tuck in, and suddenly we hit this air pocket, and woof! <laughs> the soup was up, and it landed in the middle of the lap of this bloke sat next to me. <laughs> well, luckily, he was asleep at the time. So I woke him up. I said, are you feeling any better? <laughs> Get it up, it'll do you good. I thought the best thing to do is stick his head between his knees. He'd be grateful for that. He wasn't. He started kicking and shoving and fighting. I didn't know he had a fag in his mouth, otherwise... <laughs> <laughs> that was a nasty accident, Doctor. Poor man nearly lost all his fingers. Yes, but thanks to microsurgery, we were able to graft them all back on again. Oh, you're such a skillful surgeon. Thank you. What do you think? <laughs> Back on in a minute. Oh. There you go, Katie. Everybody's off. How long did that take? 45 seconds. That is the fastest we've ever done, that emergency drill. I better let the passengers back on. This is your captain speaking. We're currently flying at 32,000 feet at a speed of 120 miles an hour. <laughs> We all love that country. 
country music The Rocky Mountains and the Redwood Trees Be it blanket on the ground Or that famous bluegrass sound All the mellow tones of gentleman Jim Reeves I know that I won't forget you For I've loved you too much or too long Though you don't want me now I'll still love you Till the breath in my body has gone Now if you take a trip down to San Quentin the audience just cannot make a dash Well, they're like ten and can't escape from the voice that shakes and quakes His name's not Sue, but really Johnny Cash Six foot six, he stood on the ground He weighed 235 pounds But I saw that giant of a man fall down to his knees by love You can't see it with your eyes, hold it in your hands like the wind that covers our land Ever since time, nothing's been found that's stronger than love Now there's one man quite famous for his headband For many years he's been the people's choice He dresses like a scruff and the sound he makes is rough It's the one and only Willie for you now Love you quite as good as I could have, and I guess I never told you. I'm so happy that you're mine. Little things I should have said and done. Just never took the time You were always on my mind You were always on my mind Now if you want the biggest hits in Nashville Look no further than this country style duet Kenny Rogers with white hair Dolly Parton with her face <laughs> They're the biggest country duet that you've met Here you come again Just when I'm about to get myself together You waltz right through the door Just like you did before And wrap my heart round your little finger Here you come again to make it work without you You look into my eyes And lie those pretty lies And pretty soon I'm wondering How I came to doubt you All you gotta do Is smile that smile And there go all my little friends say this They say that I hear you And in a little while You're messing up my mind And filling up my senses Here I come again Here she comes up Come again. And there she goes. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! You're being ridiculous! Can't you see how pathetic you're being? Why don't you stop this nonsense before it goes too far? It'll be too late, and then you'll both realize one of you could die. Why don't you just grow up? <laughs> <laughs> A couple of years ago, I was back when I was still up in, in north of England. I went around collecting one day. I was collecting for the South Bank Youth Orchestra. And I went knocking on this one door, and a little old lady came. I said, Good afternoon. I'm collecting on behalf of the South Bank Youth Orchestra. She said, Pardon? I said, I'm collecting on behalf of the South Bank Youth Orchestra. She said, Pardon? I said, I'm collecting on behalf of the South Bank Youth Orchestra. She said, Pardon? I went, oh, forget it. So I turned and walked down the, down the path. And as I was going out, she said, shut the gate. I said, you can stick your gate. She says, you can stick the South Bank Youth Orchestra. <laughs> you know,
know, Davis, I didn't expect to have to wait around while you guys dug up a fourth player. Oh, believe me, Mr. Brookman, this geezer is well worth waiting for. He's a patsy. He's an 18-carat, 100% idiot. The last time I played poker with him, I told him I had a full house. He offered to put me up for the night. But has he got the money for a big game like this? No problem. This geezer loves a gamble, which is lovely, because he hasn't got an ounce of luck. The last horse he bet, it come home at 10 to 1. Well, that's not bad. 10 to 1 in the morning. <laughs> it was so slow, it was overtaken in the first furlong by a milk float. Do you know what? He lost his club to me on a turn of a card. You guys play for pretty high stakes. I wouldn't say that. Chocolate biscuits don't cost that much, do they? <laughs> well, when's he gonna get it, you, Pete? See that? My foot moves and his mouth works. <laughs> don't worry, son. He'll be here any minute now. Hello, fellas. <laughs> sorry, I'm late. Yeah. Well, well, Robbie Box. When was the last time we two played together? Do what? I? Do you two know each other? Sure. I had the privilege of taking Mr. Box to the cleaners last time we sat down together. Cobblers. No, it was definitely the cleaners. The thing is, Brookman, the only reason you won last time is because the game was rigged. Now, hang on a minute, boy. The last time we played, I had ten Jack, Queen, King and Mrs. Bunder Baker's one. Well, can we get on with the game? We're already late, thanks to him. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry about that. I had a bit of trouble getting away from Jan. She doesn't like my playing cards. Huh, we'll get a new pack then. <laughs> right, anyway, can we come here and talk about your girlfriend and I, or poker? What? Hey? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 let's play. All right, gentlemen, the game is car five card stud. Twenty pound minimum bet. No raising above the pot. Want some chips, box? No, thanks, I've eaten. Let's <laughs> just play the game, eh? There we go. Ace, eight, seven, seven. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, my mind's just not on it. <sighs> Looks like you to bet, Robbie. Stone me a pair of aces. Would be nice. I'm out. And me? Come on, I thought you guys were supposed to be proper gamblers. You don't shout out to you what you've got in your own box. That's ridiculous. You're supposed to keep stum, son. That's right, little buddy. Mm. Ah, this is the worst hand I've ever seen. This is positively the worst hand of cards I've ever had. I'll bet £15,000. <laughs> I'm out. I mean, come on, how did you know? <laughs> Nobody bets 15 grand on a crummy end. What are you, some sort of winkle? <laughs> Tell me, little buddy, how are all those idiot friends of yours? You know, the ones with the stupid names. Oh, I don't know anybody with stupid names. I only know Jacko, Ferret. <laughs> 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 That's the one with the ground, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he's going to race it next week. By the state of the dog, he'll probably beat it as well. <laughs> Like it's just you and me, so uh, I'm gonna raise you a thousand pounds. Oh, that's all right by me, I don't mind. I call your thousand and raise you a grand. <laughs> I call you a grand and raise you another grand. In that case, I call your call. And raise your raise. And call your raise. <laughs> by the call of the raise, by the raise call. But the call by raise by the when I'm calling you. Box. It's gonna cost you five grand to stay in the game. Will you accept an I owe you? I owe you. I owe you. You owe me? No, I owe you. Uh, it's fine by me. What do you got? So here you are, Robbie. I might have guessed. Not now, Princess. I've got to finish this hand. Oh, for goodness sake, Robbie, when's it going to stop? Do you want to see my cards, Brookman? I've got West Ham's defence. What's that? Four queens. Mm. It's <laughs> a nice card, son. Uh, but not good enough. Well, that's me finish it. Well, I hope you've learnt your lesson, Robbie. I never want to see you playing cards again. Oh, don't worry, darling, you won't. You'll be in America. What? Yeah. Sorry, Jan, I've lost you to the yank. <laughs> Robbie! Hey, Tuts. Get off. Oh, Robbie! <laughs>
That's all we've got time for this week. I'd like to say good night to each and every one of you. Good night, 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 good night. Joe Longthorne is currently appearing at the North Pier Theatre, Blackpool. <laughs>